Hi there, this is Rick Nielsen with Business Learning Systems, and in this episode of the Trivanus podcast, given that TechSmith's Snagit comes with Lectora, I'm going to provide you with some Snagit editor tips and tricks that could really add a great set of tools to your toolbox. Erica Smith, a Snagit guru and instructional designer at TechSmith, told me there are two kinds of people, those that use Photoshop and those that don't. And Snagit can really fill that gap. Most people use Snagit to capture an image or maybe annotate it, share it with others where graphical representation can really aid in communication. But if that's all you use it for, you're really underutilizing a very powerful tool. The first thing that I'd like to do is take a quick tour of the Snagit interface and this is comprised of the menuing system including a ribbon menu and this can be turned on and off by just right clicking and minimizing the ribbon and then by pressing the Alt key in Windows at least you have a real nice set of hotkeys here that appear and make for super fast navigation once you get used to them and they actually drill down to features on each one of the, the sub-menus as you drill down, so very handy. And then the workspace, which is just where you're going to be working on your image. The capture tray, or the open capture tray, which is a history of what you've captured and have been working on. And then the search, tag, library pane, and this can be expanded or collapsed by just clicking on the arrow here. And finally, down in the lower right hand corner, there is a history icon. And you can look at your history going back to when you first installed Snagit. So let's spend a little bit of time covering some tips and tricks that you might not have thought about in Snagit. And I would like to state for the sake of clarity that when using the draw tools that that you are creating images within your work area on top of the image that you captured or opened uh, using Snagit. But I'm going to refer to these images created with Snagit tools as objects just to avoid confusion. And so let's go ahead and move on to the first area I'd like to discuss and I want to talk about vector images. You can set certain objects that you create in Snagit to either vector or non-vector by accessing the effects menu and then clicking on the create as vector. This means that as a vector the image can be moved and resized or edited after it's drawn. If the image is not set to vector it can't be edited or put another way the image is or the object excuse me is flattened. So let's see how this works. First of all I'm going to select the text tool and I'm going to make sure that the create as vector is turned on. So there it's turned on and then I'm going to create a just a simple text object here and I'm going to click off of that object and then I'm going to click back on it and you'll see that I can edit it in any way that I want. Now let's go ahead and click off of that. Let's change the create as vector to not create as vector or to turn that off to disable it. And the text tool is still selected so let's go ahead and create a, another text object and now I click off of that one and I try and select it and I can't. On the other hand the one that I created with the create as vector turned on is still editable in in the same way that it was before so this shows a, or provides a great deal of granularity in that the while this is turned while create as vector is turned off at this point I still have objects that I created using the same tool and they're still editable and others are not. Now if I change to say the arrow object 
the create as vector is turned on and uh, I can disable it here as well. So now I'm going to go ahead and select the arrow and draw that and again it's not editable. So using vector and non-vector objects you can really have a great deal of flexibility in how you work within Snagit. One parting comment about working with vectors is that you want to get all of your object work done, all of your editing done, before you save your file to a flattened version in most of the formats like uh, JPEG and PNG and so forth. If you do want to keep working with them uh, in vector mode and having all of those various objects available, you can save it to the Snagit format and then you can just go back in and keep working on it. Before I move on to bitmap editing, I wanted to share an easy way to zoom in and out when using Snagit. And that's just simply to use the control scroll and the scroll on the mouse to zoom in and out. And this is the same key combination as in many other applications. So just the way that I do it, it's real quick and easy. So now let's move on to bitmap editing. And if you open a bitmap in image and snag it, a JPEG or a PNG for instance, it's just that. It's a flat image and if you select a portion of that image and move it, it's going to just move the pixels around but stay a single image and it'll automatically flatten once you take off the mouse off of that uh, selection. And however, if you select a portion of an image and you copy it and paste it, that selection becomes a new bitmap. It's not a vector, but at the same time you don't poke a hole to the background of your image, so it's definitely better. So this photo is one that I took while walking along the Great Wall in China, and let's say that I wanted to fix the bottom step, and if you look here it's kind of messed up. So, so we're, going to, we're going to fix that and make sure that you have the selection tool highlighted and there are a number of different selection tools uh, in this case let's just use the rectangle selection tool and then just select the step that you want to use to replace the one at the bottom and copy it and paste it and then position it where you want to and you can make minor resizing adjustments. Again, this is a quick fix. It's quick and dirty. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and fine tune by bringing in another step to make it look a bit more random. And I've got this one that's got this big chip in it here. So I'm going to go ahead and take that out. And again, a little resizing. And hey, it's not bad for a quick fix. So you can use this method when working with artwork that maybe you have a graphic designer that did some, some artwork for you and you just want to make some minor changes. Uh, or you can do it to just kind of move things around to create a new mock-up. Now, if you want to do super fine editing, make sure that you have the pixel grid option turned on through the view menu and then zoom in and depending on the resolution of your image that may be way in and then you can use the selection tool and copy and paste as I described above pixel by pixel so you can really move in and do some very very fine work. Here's a real time saver. Use the batch conversion tool to perform any number of tasks to multiple graphics at the same time. And you just do this simply by accessing through the main menu the convert images tool. You select the images that you want to convert. So let's select a few images here. Then select the conversion filters if you want to modify colors or scaling or any number of other things. And then finally, you select your file format. You can rename them and give them a special naming sequence. 
and then send them to a desired output directory. So this is a pretty killer time-saving feature. Finally, I wanted to share a couple of ideas with you about finding and organizing graphics within Snagit. If you don't see the search pane on the right hand side of the screen, you can access it by clicking on the view search pane option. And you can also just click on the little arrow off to the off to the right on the screen and that'll expand it and collapse it. Well, I don't use the tag feature that much. The keyword tool can provide you with a real easy way to categorize images and you can just enter any tag, any keyword you want in the upper left hand corner and you can enter multiple keywords, whatever you want to do. And and once you have your images categorized with keywords, then you can easily search for them in the search pane. And then finally, Snagit automatically keeps a library of all the images that you have either captured or opened or created in the app. So you have a multiple series of tools that you can use to organize your files and also find them. I did want to formally thank Erica Smith at TechSmith for her time and input in creating this episode and putting it together. And I also want to thank the Trivanus folks uh, who are always willing to help in providing me with direction. Well, that's about it for this episode. I hope that I inspired you to maybe dig a little bit deeper into Snagit when you're working with Trivanus products. And thanks again for taking the time. And until next time, this is Rick signing off.